You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you will hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal-making across sports, media, and entertainment. That is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is not and, as um, simple you know, I, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many you know, more doors. The show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. It's only a kick. A jump. A block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle. A run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. What's up, gang? Welcome into Packers Total Access Post Game Show. My name is Clayton. You can check us out at Packernet.com. You can find me on Twitter at Packers underscore access. If you'd like to email the show, you can send a message to Packers Total Access at gmail.com. I'm joined here with a uh, room full of heroes. We got Jacob from the uh, Packernet Fantasy Podcast, and we got Mr. Uh, Pack Daddy himself, Ryan Schlipp. Well, this was a uh, this was an interesting one, right, guys? I mean, I, d- did anybody else do any screaming during this game? I need to know. A lot of screaming, yeah. Okay, awesome. All right, so I'm I'm not alone there. Great, but uh, great win for those of you listening on the pod. Obviously, um, you're checking this out on Monday morning. The Packers come away with a 31 to 28 overtime victory over the Cowboys, and we said it all week. We heard people talking about it all week. Of course, the Packers. Uh, we wouldn't be surprised if they come out and beat the Cowboys, right? And <laughs> in the game of the week after dropping one to the line. So here we are, um, man. There was a lot of things going into this game that you could kind of kind of key in on. You know, I, I said before the game there was five things that I really wanted to watch for. It was one, Christian Watson, two, Zach Tom, who actually Oof. did not play, three, Devontae Wyatt, four, Isaiah McDuffie, and five, Kingsley and Ibarre. And, you know, I didn't put Christian Watson number one saying, yeah, he's going to have a breakout game. It's just the first one that come to mind. But, I mean, we got we to gotta start with that, right, guys? And it was the, it was the, uh, the one thing that blew up here tonight as they uh, defeat the Dallas Cowboys. So, Ryan, man, you and I, we've uh, we've talked about Christian Watson a lot. Um, I know you've pointed out time and time again that when he's on the field, whether it's jet motion or just stretching the field vertically, this offense looks different. And it's been one of those seasons where he's battled injuries and, uh, you know, had the concussion and whatnot. But what did you think, man? First takeaway, Christian Watson, breakout game here with uh, three receiving touchdowns. My biggest fear after he had those first two drops is they're done. My son was here, and he's he is the biggest Christian Watson fan in the world, and he kept yelling, why aren't they throwing to Watson? I said, he dropped it twice. He might not see another pass the rest of the day. And um, luckily, they, they stuck with it. They kept going to him, and holy cow. Um, I mean, you, you, could, you can summarize how we won this game with two guys, Rudy Ford and Christian Watson, three touchdowns, yep. two picks. I mean, that's, that's how you end up beating uh, the Dallas Cowboys by three points right there. Absolutely. What about you, Jacob? What did you think, man? Hundred percent. Ryan thoughts. just Ryan just took the the exactly. You, you can't. You got two guys that just absolutely showed out. Rudy Ford, Christian Watson, and 
Another shout out to Mama Watson. I was wrong. Homie is a player. That guy has got he's he's glitz and glamour. He's he's you know, you know, he's the cat's meow. That's it. That's what I'm saying, man. He is um <clears throat> although I will say that they did show a preview that showed that when he missed one of the first initial balls, his pinky, if 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 he yeah. did not have a dislocated pinky, that guy is <laughs> what's the word? A freak. I don't know how that works because the pinky was to the to the there that doesn't work that's not how that works i'm not a doctor but i know that you're not supposed to have this go to there so um <laughs> for those of you business. listening on podcasts it it's just it's it's a freakish kind of injury that should not have happened so therefore i was wrong i was wrong i'll admit happily at the beginning of this game i was calling everybody you know i was put them to the gatos throw them up there put them up chop them down and uh I'm just saying it was so unbelievably great to watch Christian Watson come to fruition. And you could see that the fact that the guy, we all knew that he had the ability. The guy is six, a thousand. He, he weighs nothing. He runs a four, two, seven, right? He's a freak of nature. All he has to do is catch the ball, which is a big deal as a wide receiver. You know, that's kind of like the big deal about that. And, um, now he's doing it. And you could see once he gets that first catch, once he gets that first, that first, glimmer of hope that first glimmer of confidence and now you see what we can do and i think rogers can see what he can do and i, I will say one thing one harsh criticism of rogers the first ball that we threw to watson i say we like as if we're on the team together but uh, when rogers threw it to him he dropped it and he did that signature rogers look at the sidelines like told you and i did not like that that's when i first sent my first text in the group message and i said here he goes again here he goes again rogers looking at the sideline as if he and doesn't it's like so, the people he's touching, you know, anyway. So it's amazing though, how we look at things different because I seen the side eye and the side eye for me what was, did you see? it was there. Like he was telling the floor, like, meaning it let's was go there. again. Like, it's a good thing. Like it, it was there. That's the meaning, way I like, let, let's try it again. Kind of thing. Yeah. Which maybe, they clearly you know, did. But again, I don't want to spend another second of a podcast yeah. trying to break down body language, to be honest with you. And it's, that would be nice. There's plenty of those, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't even know what the right word is. You go to Twitter, you'll find plenty of body language seminars in the Packers Twitter right now. I promise you that. You can get all the training you want there. But You don't well, like social media psychologists? Absolutely. I, I will say, too, though, if we're going to talk body language, the end of the game, there's no discussion about how that body language was at the end of the game with Rodgers and everybody else, how was excited so everybody happy. was. And, and it just felt good to see it because – Yep. I mean, nobody likes seeing ticked off Rodgers and Rodgers screaming at LaFleur and all that stuff, but seeing how excited he and everybody else was, it just felt good. It was like chicken soup for the soul. It just made you feel good. <laughs> on, a, will, on a cold Wisconsin morning. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, but that is that is 100% Ryan is true. That that body language, we've talked about it in a negative way. When he just does the yeah. the Mario, when he does the Mario, yeah. we're winning, bro. Just do it. Yeah, it everybody else jacked up, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Love it. Let's go to the chat here real quick. Let's run through the chat real quick. We got Goose, one hell of a game. How about them boys? <laughs> Watson, a stud. And then uh, we got uh, also here in the chat, Daniel says, all the screams. Thomas Austin said, I did, talking about screaming. Um, Goose, look, Goose going to try to check us right off the bat. Still to tear it down a little in the offseason. <laughs> <laughs> we got a go pack go from, uh, from Thomas Austin. Goose said, lots of screaming, all the screaming. All right, cool. So, with that being said, the other guy that I mentioned in the tweet was kind of an honorable mention if he played, and that's why I didn't put him on that list of five, was was Rudy Ford because we didn't know what angle they would take. And, and you know, it, it, it's easy to look at someone who plays part-time and you see a high PFF grade and you see flashes and go, man, we need to just put him in there. But it's another thing when the coaches are seeing him in practice all week long and, you know, there's a lot of things that, us armchair quarterbacks don't see, obviously, that go into putting together a game plan, much less creating a starting lineup. But with that being said, I mean, it was true. They put Savage down into the slot for the most part, right, playing nickel, put Rudy Ford in at safety. Rudy obviously gets two interceptions. Was that on back-to-back -back drives, Ryan? Am I remembering correctly? It was very close together if it wasn't back-to-back, -back, yeah. yeah. It was – I mean, it was – it was a thing. There was a goal beauty, line so. interception and then uh, like a third down interception kind of thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Rudy, so Rudy, Rudy's a beast. Yeah, Rudy Ford, back-to-back -back interceptions, absolutely uh, awesome there. You know, early in the game kind of kept them in it. Let's talk a little negative here. Amari Rogers. Um, man, 
you know, I don't, I don't know how you continue to march him out there. I don't know what but, it's going to uh, take. Obviously, yeah. they pulled him. And Ryan, did your anxiety level go down tremendously like mine when they when we seen Keyshawn Nixon back there? Even even him trying to catch it like a receiver. Yeah, yeah I still felt better than more than. No, I I, I agree. I mean, people got mad at me when I said like he did a good job. Like, oh, that was stupid. He shouldn't have caught it. Like, like okay, granted, but. Just the fact that he did it just builds the confidence that, hey, this isn't Amari, right? This is a different guy. He catches the ball, and he, he actually gets yards after the catch. Now, it's not to say he won't drop one eventually, especially if he's doing that, but that was more or less my point. Like, it's just he he provides that level of comfort that Amari never did. Yeah, absolutely. What about you, Jacob? Are we moving no, was, with uh, Keyshawn? Ryan, were you just talking about Nixon? Is that what you said over? Yeah. Rogers. Okay. Yeah. Cause Nixon, when he catches the ball, he literally like, he caught it kind of like it was a, just a thing he does. And he was like, and then he started faking it with the ball fake. And I'm like, <laughs> come on, man. Like just, and, but then he ran for like 20 yards and I'm like, all right, yeah. all right. Nixon's got it. Like, and he, 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 he's the polar opposite of what Amari looks at that ball coming at him. He's like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, you, you can <laughs> feel the anxiety. Like that's what makes you so nervous as the ball's coming. Like, Oh, he doesn't He's so not confident right now. You can feel it. Yeah. And, and that's, I just, I just don't understand how the, so when I'm in the chat and I'm saying like LaFleur needs to do this, or I think that, you know, my criticisms that are seemingly kind of like, I don't know what the word is, uh, uh, with the, with the, with the, you know, the current motion, the, the in vogue kind of thing. I don't want to fire the coach. I don't want to fire LaFleur. I just want them to tighten up and I want them to kind of, put people out there that are doing the things that we've seen them like we right. this is what i'm crazy about is we've seen what what people can do and what they can't do and we don't make adjustments and i've exactly. i don't understand that and yeah absolutely ahead, guys, so Goose well, just, negative note savage and and i <laughs> exactly he, he popped up on mine my sheet all night long now he, he did have one or two good plays i do think he played better yeah. um from that nickel spot from the star position for sure but uh yeah he's still he is what he is. You know, you, you you can't trust him in coverage or in space trying to make a tackle. But when he's the one being the aggressor, he seems to be kind of in his element. Do you agree with that, Ryan? Yeah, I mean, I, when the game started, I thought we had a real nice setup. He was looking great in the slot and Rudy at safety. I was like, man, we've, we've got a real good group here. And then as the game went on, started giving up a couple passes and the tackling's just bad. I mean, we've always known that about Savage. He's not a big dude. He's not very physical. You always need that second guy to come in and help him clean up because so he's just going to get dragged like that little kid on your ankle, just dragging him <laughs> down the field. So it gets a little old. I mean, I, I still like Savage, and I'd like to have him give him a little bit more time to see if he can kind of blossom and learn that position a little bit because I think maybe there's something there in coverage. But um, And I do like that they blitzed him out of that position. I think that could be, with his speed, a real nice little uh, twist to put in there. But, um, yeah, it did start to break down a little bit as the game went on for sure. Absolutely. We were talking off air here. We were trying to comb through and see who the offensive linemen were, and we confirmed that I don't I don't know if anybody went in or out of the game, but to the best of my knowledge, it was Bakhtiari left tackle, Elton Jenkins left guard, yeah. Myers at center, Runyon at right guard, and Yash at right tackle. And I don't know, man, I, I know that Rodgers took a couple sacks, one of which I felt like he, uh, he held him the ball too long, you know, just was – trying to let things develop a little too much. Um, another one he tried to scramble on and, and got caught going out. I think that was the fumble. But other than those two sacks, man, it felt like we had a pretty clean pocket. It yeah. really did. And when you come away scoring 31 points and your quarterback is averaging 11.2 yards per clip, yeah. I mean, and only 224 yards, you're talking about timely passing. You're talking about play action passes that were just – opening everything up. He was yeah. 14 of 20, 224. Like I said, averaged 11.2, had three touchdowns, no mm -hmm. interceptions. He was sacked twice for 16 yards negative, of course, and then had a quarterback rating of 146.7. I told Jacob there offline, Ryan, that I noticed a couple throws that got away from Rodgers for sure, the one that was behind Sammy, and then there was a sideline pass to Lazard, you could tell, just really got away from him. It, you know, me being a Rodgers apologist, I immediately <clears throat> thought, that looks like the thumb, you know, on that throw because he wasn't like, I don't know what happened. You could just kind of tell like he was disappointed. But overall, what did you think of uh, Rogers' performance tonight? I thought it was, I think like I said on Twitter, this was by far his best performance. I don't care what his quarterback coach says of of the year. <laughs> I mean, part, partly just it was his his energy. I mean, he was yeah. he was timely. The decisions, everything was great, but also just his energy, the way he was treating people. 
and I was a little iffy in the beginning, but going up to Christian and 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 just not giving up on him, like like we talked right. about early on, he could have just said screw this guy and we lose the game. You know, we would have lost if he would have gotten away from it. But um, yeah, the the thing the thing that I really like about it, and he, he had a good game, uh, 14, 224, 146.7 pass rating. But and I hate to even say this, but a week or two ago I said I wish our offense operated a little bit more like the Bears' offense. They run, 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 run. And then, then they pick you apart with the pass because stuff's wide open because you're killing with the run. We ran the ball 30, 37 times and completed yep. 14 passes. 39. Well, yeah, that, that, I wasn't counting the Aaron Rodgers, but you're right. right 39 How dare you? <laughs> but, His but two no, yards. I, I just, and that's what we've been saying all year. <laughs> run the freaking ball. And then let the and, and with Christian Watson speed over the top, I mean that that's the perfect formula. And I think we need to stick with that the rest of the year. That's it. Run the ball. And if they try to close in on you, you can't do that. We got Watson over the top. Yeah, and I, I got up early this morning and, and started watching some tape. And I went through and watched Seattle, Miami, Cincinnati. Um well, we heard um, you sent us the chats. We we yeah. uh I went through and watched all of their opening series, you know, the scripted plays, right? For those offenses that are just tearing it apart right now and I went and obviously looked at Green Bay's and Green Bay had that long drive there against Detroit right and and I was expecting to see less of what I actually saw I seen a lot more under center a lot more motion than I expected I don't know if it's been like that you know obviously through the entirety of the game it could have changed I didn't go through and chart everything but uh you kind of seen it tonight man you've seen a lot of play fake a lot of this is, this is what the L.A. Rams did really, really well last year, running a lot of 11 personnel and a lot of play fake. And um, it really came together tonight. And it, it's easy to, to, to kind of look at it tonight, like you were saying too, Ron, you know, Aaron Jones averaging 5.8 yards a carry, uh, you know, 24 carries for 138 yards and a tud. A.J. Dillon, 13 carries, 65 yards, averaging five yards a pop. Last week, neither of those guys cracked the three yard per average, you know. So it was one of those things that they got it going tonight. They stuck with it. A couple of times they ran that little toss play on the edge, and I cringed because it was just like, man, <laughs> that play is either going to get you eight or lose you four. There's exactly. never anything in between. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so with that being said, let's do this. I'm going to share the screen real quick because I want to play something. I thought this was really cool. We actually got uh, Christian Watson posted a video right there on the field yeah. on Twitter. Let's check it out real quick, see what he had to say here. If I can get it to pull up. All right, here we go. The Packers are coming back, and it's a long season. It's a long season. We're doing things right this way. Let's go. Go, Pack, go. Love it. Love it. And then he's yeah. at the podium. We'll hold off on the podium, but check this out. Jair. Here's Jair. You know, Jair kind of spoke up this week. I'm sure you guys seen it. Said, I told guys, if I see somebody laughing in the locker room, I'm like, why are you laughing? We're losing, right? And he kind of went after the guys. But here he's the Oh, yeah. We here with Mason. Game winner, baby. We out of here, baby. Put the seatbelt on. Good. Oh, yeah. We here with And then this one right here is my favorite. Though. This is my That's, favorite. I love it. Half the distance to the goal. Look at Automatic. First down. Well, this game is everything. I love it. And, and I wanted to mention that with Rodgers because that was right after the block, right? Did you guys see – he, he Did you see I'm that sorry, block, but... line? Oh, yeah. It, it... <laughs> I'm, I'm being sarcastic I mean, because he's flexing and everybody's like, yeah, he's fired up. And I'm like, they they made it sound as if he took the guy out of his cleats, and I was cracking up. Well, no, yeah, obviously he got hit. I mean, he's done that a couple times. He connected a little bit better on this one. The one, Remember the one with Zadarius? The other one, he kind of did a little he something. Got leveled. He got killed by the day. This one at least slowed the guy down a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's do this. Let's kind of uh, – let's hop over. Well, let's let's go to the receiving room. Christian Watson, four catches, 107 yards, averaged mm. 26.8 yards per catch, mm. three touchdowns. That's amazing. <laughs> now, the, the, the crazy thing that we really got to put into perspective, and, and as much as I don't want to do it, we got to kind of curb the enthusiasm a bit. There were eight targets and only four grabs, right? I mean, that's – that's not necessarily what you want to see, but man, you talk about a home run threat, and then to see him on that crosser make that hands catch on. And granted, he was wide open, but seeing him run that crossing route, just like the announcer said, I think it was, uh, God, I can't remember his name now, Greg Olson, right? Was like, you're not going to run stride for stride with that guy. So even on the crossers, just seeing him be able to separate, and like you pointed out, Ryan, the the play action opening that up. Sammy Watkins three catches for 47 yards. He was targeted three times, made three catches. That's a good sign. Alan Lazard four targets. Uh, had three catches for 45 yards. Uh, Aaron Jones, two catches for 18 yards. And, um, yeah, 
Tunyon, one target, one catch for eight yards. The cool thing about Lazard's catch there at the end, it was an RPO. And you could just see that they were setting that up all night long, all night long, just pounding the rock, pounding the rock. And and it's kind of, to me, it's come to light that when you look back now and see how Rodgers tried to force those RPOs in last, last week inside the red zone, it wasn't there. Tonight it was there. And, man, those guys completely bit on the run action with the RPO. And you could just see Rodgers was fired up about yep. that completion. So um, I'm not a huge fan of the RPO game tonight, though, man. You set it up with a running game like that, it's game on. But isn't it amazing that we we were missing Romeo Dobbs and then we come out in this game <laughs> and the offense blows up. And, and it's nothing to – no knock against Romeo Dobbs. He's played good for a rookie, obviously. Mm-hmm. But could you imagine if – if both of those guys were out there, do you think do you think it would be the same result? I guess is what I'm trying to say. But uh, what did you think about the receiving room, Ryan? Well, I mean, the as far as the Christian Watson thing, the the drops don't bother me as much just because it's a lot. I mean, it's ugly, but it's correctable. You know, like the 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 play where he missed it because like the announcer said he's looking back instead of up. Right. Lesson learned. He, he could have had four touchdowns in this game if he'd have probably just been looking in the right direction. The, the other hilarious thing about that play in particular is he slowed down. And then when he saw the ball, he sped up and he had like three yards separation from the guy. Like just like that, he got away from him. The back yeah. shoulder throw was ugly, but that's that's you got to work on that. He didn't know he ran like five yards too far down the field or whatever before he turned around. He wasn't where he's supposed to be. He'll figure that stuff out. But, you know, it's like somebody else was saying. Uh, after I posted my Christian Watson thing, he comes out and he's like, yeah, but he's only going to catch 25% of his passes. I'm like, all right, throw to him 10 times, and he catches four of them for 200 yards and two touchdowns. <laughs> cry about it. Like, seriously, what are you going to cry about that? And, and the funny thing is right after that, he catches another touchdown. So, um, no, I, Sammy had a good day. I mean, we've been riding Sammy. Uh, he had some really good catches. You know, the one it, that – you know, got away from Rodgers. He came back and caught that the back shoulder for a first down. That was that was really impressive. So, I mean, Sammy's a talented guy. I just think his head is kind of not. He's kind of in the clouds a little bit. But we know the guy has has got some skill. Um, and Lazard didn't have a big day, but he came up clutch when it counted. So, and that's what we need. That's what when the Packers are good, there's always that kind of stuff. You got your superstar, which in this case was Christian. And then you got guys like Sammy and Lazard just getting those clutch catches when you need them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jake here in the chat says Rudy Ford priced himself out of staying in Green Bay tonight? Question mark. Um, that's a it's a great point. That's what I was saying a couple of weeks ago. Is like you've seen enough on special teams and with his aggressiveness when he is in the lineup, man. Why don't we lock him up before his stock rises anymore? And when I say lock him up, a two three year deal, throwing some guaranteed money, going to be minimal cap hit, and you could probably give him a little bit of security. The last I heard, I believe it was fifty thousand dollars was his guaranteed money this year or part of his last contract with Jacksonville. So any, any little bit of guaranteed money, probably lock him up, but um, I don't know, man, I could also see Rudy Ford being one of those guys Ron. I mean, obviously I'm, I'm the president of the Rudy Ford fan club. Um, I could also see him be one of those guys that he has this breakout and then we look up in three or four games and be like, Oh yeah, you remember Rudy Ford? He ended up getting cut and nobody claimed him. You know what I mean? Be one of yeah. like one yeah. of those. It wouldn't surprise me, but uh, let's see here. Let's go on down here. Um, Here's a good here's a good comment from Goose. It says second negative defense versus draw plays. My God, Jacob, did you see those draw plays, bro? I mean, yeah. I mean, that kind of gives me a reminiscence of a flashback to. A, I, I just I don't understand that call. I'll never understand that call. Um, you know, and um, this is a, another game of of oh, man of of of. The Packers doing things that we just know that they shouldn't do, but we just see them reoccurrently doing things like um, the penalties, all that kind of stuff. I just, I just, it's a good win, but on top of that, it's just, um, I don't know, man. It's, it's just, it's hard to see us reoccurring the same kind of stuff over and over again. And I don't know, man, I'm just, I got you. Well, we got 12 at the podium. Let's go to 12 real quick. Let's see what uh see what he's got to say here. There what the mindset was. I might get run the ball on first down. But uh not second and not third. They're not the third down call. So I want to be aggressive and let's go get them. You know, they're playing a lot of one high man. Let's That's perfect time. And let's complete a couple passes and we're gonna go win the game. Put it away. We have two timeouts. Yeah, I get it. They have three timeouts. 
We ran the ball first down, then it called timeout. We're okay. talking about screaming at Lafleur, I think. Let's waste forty. Yeah, exactly. Let's get it down to around a minute, and let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's go win the game. What was the debate? Oh, there was time. Uh, I was so, sitting in between them. They weren't even arguing. No, we, no, we were. Look <laughs> at him, Kyle, put put him on the spot. <laughs> Or Tuesday. Or Tuesday. <laughs> I know. <laughs> there you go. There's twelve. I know you. I know I'm in the minority when I say I like Rogers, but I just love how he puts the media on on blast. Like, let's let's talk about that screaming session with uh, Matt Lafleur. Do I want to see a starting quarterback screaming at his head coach on national TV? No, but you could read his lips, and it was it was. I had it. I actually had a buddy text me what he thought it was. And here we are back in the lip reading and body language <laughs> business, right? Compare but, it to uh, my lip reading abilities. The, the best that I came away with was why the F did we run this S out? And basically meaning why are we not me being more aggressive there in the fourth quarter, right? When he, it was in the fourth quarter when they just ran the ball, right? Um, so I think that's kind of what he was saying there is like, why, why did we run the ball twice not call a timeout run the clock down and essentially take ourselves out of the position to score there and i agree with it to be honest with you it's yeah. just how he goes about doing it obviously um you know that's something that uh i don't know it's hard to it's hard for me to put a lot of a lot of stock into that type of stuff because i've played sports guys i work concrete and steel construction you're good jacob do what you got to do brother um i work concrete and steel construction for about six years People, people get upset. People scream like it's a part of life. And for some yeah. reason, we, we, we try to pretend that because someone is a professional athlete, they're not allowed to express their emotions or not even that they're not allowed to, but how dare he get upset in front of everybody, dude, play sports with me. And you're going to really hate me <laughs> because I am one of those vocal, like big time. So that stuff doesn't bother me that much, but Thomas Austin in the chat says another big note, the Packers came back. That's a good point, Ryan. We're always hearing about the how they can't they can't yeah. come from behind, right? So, well, um, especially they, since they they did kind of fall apart a little bit. You know, they had the Amari Rogers thing. It was the second yeah. half. It's like you could you could feel it slipping away, and I think everybody just thought, "Up oh, here we go again." But they found a way to kind of rally around a couple good plays and come back. And that's they haven't been able to do that all year. Absolutely, Daniel in the chat says. If Ford does that uh, of effort for the rest of the year, yes, one game, they talking about, you know, as far as extending them. It's true. It's just one game. I, I'm eager to see him back out there for sure. Yeah, um, Goose talked about, you know, how they stuck with the run. Absolutely. Um, Daniel also said in the chat that those passes went straight to Rudy Ford. So Daniel's in there going, look, slow the roll on Rudy Ford, dude. Don't start chanting Rudy. He's generally had a good day, and he's had a good year all year. I think is, and plus Savage is bad. So there's a lot of factors for for why this is a good thing. But I, I do understand the, you know, maybe we don't need to give him forty million dollars or anything like that. But but no, he does deserve a lot of credit. He made some good plays, not just I mean tackling. That, that play where he came and blew somebody up, I think behind the line of scrimmage, he's coming from 15 yards deep. Second, the ball is snapped. He beelines, takes a great angle. I mean, no, yeah. he, he had a good day. I agree. I think I'm expecting his PFF grade to be one yeah. of the highest of the entire team for sure. Um, also in the chat, Thomas Austin says the Bears lost, the Packers won. I'm happy. It's always Bears a good thing. in the division. <laughs> I seen your tweet, man. Tell, tell everybody Bears what you Twitter found it, so I got off there just in time. They're losing their minds right now. <laughs> They're so mad. <laughs> Andrew in the chat says this was flipping awesome. Feels good. Good to hear you guys after a win. Absolutely, man. Um, next chat here we've got Corey. Appreciate you uh, tuning in, Corey. The minute Jair got beat deep, Barry went into his prevent quarter shell. That is still a massive negative schematically. Um, yeah. Good point there, for sure. And then Thomas Austin says, one thing I don't want to see is the players happy that they don't have to work tomorrow. Amen to that, dude. Yeah, I don't want exactly. to say they, they shouldn't have to go in tomorrow. My God, <laughs> that drove me crazy. Let's do this. Let's hop over to the defensive side of the ball and talk about it. Third on my – or fourth on my list that I tweeted out today pregame was Isaiah McDuffie because he – to me, he showed some flashes. He's been our best special teams player all year. He's a guy that last week I felt like he kind of flashed – um, Isaiah McDuffie today, guys, 13 tackles, eight solo. And he was in my notes everywhere. I mean, all over the place. It just seemed like he was always around the ball, always making stops, always playing smart. Um, 
He's definitely somebody who flashed to me. Now, why do I bring up Isaiah McDuffie? Obviously, Devondre Campbell injured right now. Um, he's going to have to play somewhat of a role. But when Devondre comes back, I'm kind of looking at Quay like, okay, look, if he if he's not ready to play at this level, I'm okay with him rotating with Isaiah McDuffie. But overall, from the inside linebackers tonight, Ryan, what did you think, man? Uh, obviously, McDuffie, 13 tackles. Quay Walker had eight, and he had a uh, – a tackle for a loss and a pass defended, which I did have him in the notes there. I felt like Quay had a good night as yeah. well. Do you do you agree with that? I just I loved McDuffie stood out to me just because the energy from the defense seemed really really solid, and he was one of those guys. I mean, he it didn't feel like a team that had a bunch of backups because of, because of injuries. I mean, McDuffie looked like he'd been out there all year. He, he played with intensity. He played with fire. Um, I I didn't notice anything. If there was anything catastrophic that he did wrong. Um, I didn't pick up on it. I saw he was right where he needed to be making tackles and flying around the field. So I, I, I just, I, the entire team's energy, which I keep coming back to was the, was the thing that I really liked about the team. And, and they just, for the first time, I think this year played like a football team. They played fast, they played physical. And, um, again, it's just surprising because we lost Rashawn, We lost our, our, our corner. We lost all these guys, so many backups coming in. And honestly, I don't know that that's a bad thing. I think there's a part of it that's, you know, a lot of young guys getting their first start like Rudy Ford, who are trying to win a spot on the team and McDuffie trying to win. I think maybe that invigorates some things, you know, guys that are that know that they're not going to get very many shots. I think it, it added to the whole thing. But no, I thought uh, he and Quay and you, know, you can go down the list. I'm probably going to say the exact same thing. They, they, they all had really good days today. Absolutely. I agree, man. Uh, Jake in the chat here. Jake is the host of the Packernet podcast. Uh, always draft season podcast. Excellent, excellent pod. I'm sure you guys, if you're hanging out with us, you've heard it. If not, and you're just tuning in on Twitter or uh, or on my YouTube channel, make sure that you check out as a part of the uh, Packernet podcast network, always draft season by Jake. But Jake in the chat says, this wide receiver room with Quentin Johnston is going to be nuts in 2023 with the <laughs> eye there. So he's already starting the Quentin Johnston uh, campaign there. We were kind of talking about that in the chat. Me and Goose were going back and forth earlier today, uh, just talking about, you know, you, you need to add a wide receiver one, right? Um, you really need to. Now, could Christian Watson become that? Absolutely. You know, if he plays like he did today, taking the top off and and just, you know, get the get the drops taken care of and all that stuff, the, the mental error there on the back shoulder throw. Um, yeah, I mean, when you see the back shoulder throw to Sammy, it's obvious he and Aaron are on the same page tonight. They weren't last week. And then uh, he was expecting Christian to look for that back shoulder throw there uh, tonight, Aaron was. But when it comes to a wide receiver one, Ryan, we were trying to talk in the chat, and, and I want to hear your take here too, Jacob. Like, how do you approach that this offseason? Because what I'm expecting, I'm fully expecting with some restructuring and things, the Packers are probably going to have about $15 million to play with in free agency this year. That's kind of the number that I feel like is a pretty safe number once everything is is taken care of. And that's that's if Rodgers comes back and Bach comes back, right? Um, how how do you think we handle it, man? Do you go out and try to draft another another receiver and hope you hit on like a Justin Jefferson type? Or is it something you would rather get a veteran, although the market's kind of inflated right now with wide receiver pay? I, I, I the, the problem I have is I, I have I have so many questions about this team right now. <laughs> I, right. I wouldn't be opposed to it. I mean, it, just watching the game we just watched, if if – if this is the team, like this is it, like before it was a fluke, all that was messed up. Now we're on track. This is it. And it's going to be this, this year and next year. Yeah. Go get me that. I, I haven't watched Quentin. I'm a, I'm a failure when it comes to draft prospects, but I need to do that. <laughs> but give me that, uh, that, that primo wide receiver to pair with this, with this group. I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. We need a safety. We maybe need an edge or whatever. I don't, I'm, I'm okay with it. I mean, again, it, it depends though. I mean, if, if this was a fluke and we go on to to continue down this bad path, then do we want to go with an all-in pick like a wide receiver? No. If right. we end up going on a run here, yeah, let's let's. I guess we'll just keep pushing in. Go get that wide receiver. I'm all for it. Absolutely. And in the chat here, Thomas Austin says nothing like seeing Big Mike McCarthy spiking a headset. That awesome. <laughs> Did you see that? that? Was awesome. Did y'all see and that? I love Mike McCarthy. You guys know yeah. I, I've I've got a, a huge man crush on McCarthy. He's my guy. But uh, it was it was somewhat uh, – it was fulfilling to see him spot that headset and get so upset because it was like, all right, yeah, you walked in with the Lombardi tan overcoat. And, <laughs> and I appreciate – Well, he, came in, he came in early and he was on the field kind of yeah. 
which Excellent. I thought was actually great. Just yeah, him taking yeah. in the sights, kind of, you know. Because he will be in that Packers Hall of Fame. It's oh, a done for sure. When he hangs oh, he it has up. to be, right? And, yeah, yeah, and it was that. it was just cool to see him come in, and they they did they honored him on the scoreboard. He he and his coaching staff, the players, Rob Davis and the guys that used to play here, and uh, then when it's time to strap it up, the whistle blows, go thump their head, and that's that's what happened. I love it. Um, in the chat here, this is a good point. We're talking receivers just now. Goose said Lazard is best from the slot. You know, Lazard to me does seem like that. He seems like that guy that could be that what they call a a bully slot, a slot bully. You know, when they drafted Equinemius St. Brown back in the day, that was their goal was to have him play that bully slot position. And it seems like, you know, most teams, they, you want your DJ Moores, you want your Randall Cobb type builds, your Amari Rogers type build to play slot. But when you got that bully slot and you could crack down for the run, it plays a big, big role. But I think we're, we're all pretty comfortable in saying that Lazard's probably not going to be back next year. Do you agree with that, guys? I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor, Factor. Factor makes delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls, mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular. Exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you will hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal-making across sports, media, and entertainment. And that is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is and not uh, as simple you know, I, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many more doors. The show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. Yeah. Again, a lot of questions, but yeah, probably. I mean, it, it depends. Again, so many factors. How much money does he want? How much money is, is the market? Yeah, I would say I mean, that. I wouldn't have thought MVS was going to get. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought MVS was getting ten million. So who knows? Maybe there's a team out say. there that wants him for a bunch of money. In which case, no. But maybe he doesn't want a bunch of, or doesn't earn a bunch of money, and he ends up staying. I don't. I don't know. A lot of questions to answer still. Right. Yeah. If, if, if he drink? wants, if he wants ten million, sorry, buddy. Love you, but see ya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Let him go test the market. If we get a huge discount, he already knows the system. It would be very, very valuable. But, uh, yeah. Corey in the chat said, to add to my comment, cover zero, third and six, and we play 12 off. The ball always will come out quick there. You know, that one play there, I think it was late in the fourth quarter. It might have actually been in overtime. I believe it was late in the fourth quarter where Jair Alexander gave up a completion there on the sideline. He was playing so soft on a third down. Like, I don't put that on Joe Barry. You know, I, I have a hard time believing Joe Barry designed a play and said, all right, guys, here's the deal. Third and long, okay, or third and eight, whatever. I want you to play just far enough off the ball and don't attack the ball. And allow the ball to come down. Like, to me, that was Jair being too safe. I put that on the player personally. But, uh, 
what what did you guys think about that in, in key situations? You know, third and six, and this this play specifically cover zero, and them playing that far off the ball. Um, what do you think, Ryan? Is that is that something schematically? Is it more on the players? How do you see it? I hadn't really thought about that in terms of their freedom to kind of do those things, or possibly just making a mistake. But one way or another, there's a serious problem there because I've seen several people mention it that there is no play call, or or at least should be no play call that involves we're going to blitz and play off. It doesn't make any sense. If you blitz, the ball comes out quickly. You have to be on them. It it doesn't, I mean, it's, it's, they have to work in that way. So, and and that keeps happening. So I don't know if it's a miscommunication or what it is. Um, I don't know how much leeway or leverage players have to to decide how close or off you want to play. I never even considered that. So I, I don't know exactly where the breakdown is, but um, yeah. if if Joe Barry's doing it, it's inexcusable. If the players are doing it, then it's like everything else. You, you guys got to, you know, you guys got to figure this stuff out. Too many mental mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. Thomas Austin in the chat said the Cowboys are now 195 and one after being up 14 <laughs> points or more at halftime. I, I need I to know if that's legit or not. I don't believe that. Yeah. I don't believe that. You, you can't trust anything that comes out of Thomas Austin. I, I can no. find it. Yeah, I, I'll look it up, but I know he's lying. <laughs> I was, I was, I was going to look it up, and then you said Thomas Austin, and I'm like, oh, he's, he's <laughs> All right. Mike Lane says bench Rodgers and put love in the rest of the season, and then he puts LOL, of course. So, um, and, and it's funny. I'm glad you brought that up because that is something that uh, that always gets kind of kind of mentioned. And I looked at the standings here, Ryan, and just to kind of go to it, in the NFC right now, you got Eagles, Vikings, Giants, Cowboys, Seahawks, Buccaneers. Um, those are your top six. Um, obviously, a seventh team is going to get in. And in that seventh spot right now, the 49ers have four wins. The Commanders have four wins. The Packers have four wins. The Falcons have four wins. The Cardinals God. have four wins. And I want you to think about how the team played tonight. Think about how they played in Buffalo. They really competed with Buffalo. And, of course, Buffalo loses to Minnesota tonight. And, of course, we lost to Minnesota earlier in the year. But think about these teams that I'm going to rattle off and tell me if you think the Packers are better than them or not. Are we better than the Arizona Cardinals? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. I agree. Are we better than the Atlanta Falcons? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Are we better than the Commanders? That's a tough one, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. And are we better than the 49ers? That's the one no for me. That's tough, yeah. Yeah. So – Essentially, that's that's kind of what we're looking at. Now, the L.A. Rams only have three wins. Jacob, you can thank me later because that game we're going to is looking like we've got a good shot to win that ball game. That might be a good time. You never God, know. Are, so- are, you, are you feeling good about that? Because my, my dad called me today, and I had a horrible day today, guys. I'm not going to get into it. Just Let's just say if you had a bad day, times it by two, that was my day. And I'm not even kidding. It was just one of those poop days. But um, uh, poop day. my dad called me. And, and he, he's like, hey, man, you know, like, you know, you'd have a poop day. He's like, yeah, but also you have to go to that Packers Rams game that you paid like 500 bucks for. And I was like, thanks, Pops. That's a great. Thanks, man. Good on you. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have probably rubbed that in. But now I'm thinking after tonight's win, hey, maybe we got a chance. Maybe this is a yeah. great night. Maybe this is still a great night where me and Clayton, Justin, Tony, Pat, Paul, we can all get together and we can just have a couple, uh, you know, brewskis, maybe just talk about, you know, what we think about the Packers, either current, present, future Packer fandom, that kind of thing. Um, it, it'd be a great opportunity. We spent a lot of money, me and Clayton did, so I'm hoping that the Rams and the Packers <laughs> game is a real good matchup because if not – I think it'll be, my I think it'll be good. It'll, I think it'll be a good uh, – a good game for the Packers because I think there will still be playoff implications if they continue to play like they I are. I hope so, man. I really yeah. hope so. Because, I mean, we're looking at it right now as, as we're recording this. For those of you listening on the pod on Monday, um, it's in the second quarter, but the Chargers are beating the 49ers 10-3 to as we speak. So um, we need the Chargers to win that game to kind of keep us in the hunt there. Obviously, the 49ers, if they somehow win, then they're going to be at the five-win mark at that point. So, Ryan, back to the question, what the, uh, the chat said there. Um, you know, about starting Aaron Rodgers. What's your take on it right now, man? Are you are you want to keep Rodgers in? Uh, at what point do you think? Is it when you're eliminated from the playoffs and you start thinking, okay, maybe we need to get Jordan Love some some looks? Or how do you how do you feel about it now after this winning against the Cowboys? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I like you said, with everything being, I was just playing with it. I've got this playoff predictor thing up. I, I don't think we can get into the playoffs this week or next week, but we're not far out. Mm-hmm. Um, we're just a couple games. It just comes down to was this was this game legit or not, right? Right. If it was, then of course you you, you keep going, you you keep trying, and and then this is just the path we're on. I don't know what the heck. I mean, the the problem with that is I'm super ticked off about this entire season up to this point. Right. Like there's, <laughs> apparently there's no issues. They just didn't feel like playing this entire time, which super pisses me off. But yeah, whatever. Here we are. Suddenly, oh no, we are actually a good team. We forgot. So we continue on this path. Yeah, uh, there's no point in, in being like, hey, man, we got a shot. We're playing real good. By the way, going to switch it up a little bit. Jordan Love's going <laughs> to take over. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if, if if this is a fluke, then once you're eliminated, you got to have the conversation. I think there's yeah. potentially some issues that are going to arise. Rodgers isn't going to like that very much. So I don't know if they're going to do it. I don't think they will do it. But if you're asking me what I would do, I would. As soon as, as, soon as we're eliminated, it's time to make a change just because – What's the point? We don't even if, even if you you don't think Love is going to be the guy and you think Aaron's going to continue, do it just to preserve him. Why risk injury? It doesn't even make sense. So that yeah. would be my thought. Gotcha. Um, it's funny you were kind of walking through your emotions just now, and I went down to grab a cup of coffee before we went live here, and I and the, the first thing I thought, man, as soon as the coffee started dripping in the cup, I went. How did we lose to the Lions? <laughs> <laughs> if we had just beat the Lions, we would, right. this would be totally different. But right. again, oh, how did we lose to the Lions? Three interceptions. That's how we yep. lost to the Lions, period. So uh, in the chat here, we've got Professor Cakes. Man, that name always makes me giggle. I don't know what. <laughs> but, oh, baby. it's I'm so D happy. Uh, that's all I can muster right now. Laughing emoji. Yeah, well, kind of kind of feel you there, Professor Cakes. Thomas Austin said, I'm going to have to go back and see what the stat line was. The moment they showed they were 195 and zero with a stat, I knew they were going to lose that. So evidently there was a stat mentioned. Is he still BSing me, Ryan? All right. All right. Let me look. What, what was it? If you're up 14 points at the half, is that what it was? I, I, I don't remember what he said. It was something. Stupid. Yeah, it says the Cowboys are now 195 <laughs> wins and one loss after being up 14 points or more at halftime. Nah. It'll take me a minute. I'm going to, nah. I'm going to find it. I'll get nah. I have a hard time believing it, too. I'm just going to call him nah. Yeah, nah. Yeah. Sure. Right here, Professor Cake said Quay Walker had a clutch uh, pass deflection, and, and i seen that, too. It's right here in the notes. It was late in the game. He came over the top. It might have been on C.D. Lamb and punched the ball out. But what did you think of our boy Quay tonight, uh, Jacob? Did you feel like he uh, he played pretty well? Dude, Quay, I'm sorry. Quay played – again, this is one of those games where, you know, I've I've – I've been a subject to being one of those little fanboys that, you know, when you're halfway through this, halfway through the game, you start doom and gloom. I've been that guy, you know, I started calling out Rogers, start calling out these things. And then all of a sudden you start seeing what these guys are doing. Quay is very much developing into a very quality linebacker. It's just, it's, you can't just expect him to jump in. Like we, we did, we expect him to jump in and be Devondre and we expected him to just, you know, because he's a first round pick, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're expecting him to be Micah Parsons. He's not, it's just nobody is other than Micah Parsons. You know what I'm saying? Like, so giving a grain of salt, this guy is having a very, very good rookie season. He started a little shaky and now he's improving, improving, improving to the point where like we're seeing him really take those big strides where we're seeing like, yeah, this is why this guy was a first round draft pick. And I'm okay with it. I'm okay with the growing pains. The same way I just watched Kristen Washington. We we watched him have those growing pains clearly through the first half of the season. And now look at him. The guy is arguably going to win NFC player of the, of the week this week. You know, who knows? Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, for sure. Um, Mike in the chat says 12 has no weapons. I can't wait for the national media talking heads to say this all week this week. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I, I got to be real, Mike. I feel like the national talking heads haven't said it in a while, um, and we won't say why, but I do remember two, three years ago, that's all they talked about. But I haven't heard anybody defending Aaron other than Kurt Warner here lately. Um, but what do you guys I watched think? That. I watched that, by the way. That was a great yeah. video. It was a good breakdown for sure. And I just loved that how he pointed out, hey, look, Rodgers made mistakes too, but here's yeah. what he's frustrated. He's not saying it's okay to throw a temper tantrum. He's just saying, look, here's – that for the people Here's who are watching, what he you know, saw, why is he acting right. like that? No, there's there's legitimate reasons, and it, I learned a lot from the video. Just the little nuances of like he was talking about, 
you want him to run through the defender's right number and things like that on certain routes. It was it was very uh, I don't know it was very good to see. But um, all right, cool. So uh, Thomas Austin said, "Glad to see Dylan catching footballs again." Hey, AJ Dylan had a good game tonight. He looked like the battering ram tonight. Y'all agree with that? I agree. Yep. Yeah, he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Austin, you fib. Put a put a ten. Oh, a long time. He's lying. He's Unbelievable. All right, Thomas Austin in the chat says, all love for McCarthy. We agree. And then he also says, Bears, Brady, Belichick, boys, beats, battle. <laughs> <laughs> That's the quote of the night right there. <laughs> I love Which it. Which bear is best? <laughs> yeah. Black Bears ball. eat beats. <laughs> all right. So uh, Bill Ryan says, when will they release Amari? Man, I, I honestly, guys, I'm going to be real. I feel sorry for Amari Rodgers. I like, do too. He cannot return punts, and they keep putting him back right. there. It's like stop doing that to the guy. And right, and if, yeah. if you need to cut, I'm not saying that he's oh no he's a third round pick they shouldn't cut him. No, I'm of the belief if somebody isn't helping the team and you might be able to upgrade it getting a free agent off the street, cut the guy who's struggling. Period. So I, is, I really is, believe that. But when it comes is, to Amari Rodgers, he is not a punt returner. I don't. Right. I think they said what did they say this year alone? Four fumbles. Is that right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Five. You know, five. five. Is it five, five. now? Five. Unbelievable. Is Unbelievable. this possibly Ryan or Clayton? One of the guys that Rodgers has been calling out about apparently not doing this certain, you know, not um, you know, uh, finishing certain routes or doing certain plays or running the certain things and practices. Like we've all been kind of scratching our heads yeah. being like, who is he talking about? Like, who could this possibly be? And we keep narrowing things. And is it possibly <laughs> the guy that's dropped five freaking fumbles that has cost? I mean, that guy has literally cost us at least a game, if not multiple. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Um, Corey in the chat says Rogers looked D good tonight. Best PFF grade of the year, and that's kind of what Ryan was talking about. Let's take a quick guess of Aaron Rodgers's PFF. Ninety-one, grade. ninety-one from Jacob. Let's write it down. Go this ahead. would be fun right here. Ninety-one from Jacob. What do you think, Ryan? What's your guess for his PFF grade? Oh, jeez. Um, the deep shots, the touchdowns. Yeah, Ryan, I, calculator. See, he's going to nail this. Yeah, <laughs> he's, uh, he's pretending like he's looking up as his hands are going. I'm just refreshing PFF to see if they got it done early. Come on, okay. uh, yeah, that's uh, what's up. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna go wild card and say it's a grade that's gonna really tick everybody off, like one of those kinds of things. I'm gonna say it's like a 79. 79. 79. Okay. It's right. a good grade, but it's still like everyone's like PFF is drunk and stupid, and nobody should. Ever <laughs> do it again. And, yeah, and I, and I kind of feel like he he missed. I know he missed on two throws that I see. Was, I was going to say there was two obvious ones where it was like, that was and bad. he took a. I think he took one sack that he shouldn't have taken. I think he'll get a negative grade there. I said um, two, I'm going to say two. I'm going to say 83 is my guess. All right. So Jacob said 91. Ryan said can, I read, can I can I redo mine? <laughs> yeah, <go ahead. laughs> 96. 96. Dang. I want to go 96. My man. All right. All right. All right. Well, uh, oh, I'm probably... sorry. I'm sorry. 86. 86. 86. Oh, I'm sorry. Goodness. I'm sorry. Give him a... No, he's got to stick with 96. Screw no, me. no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So here, right. I, 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 got no. a, I got a question that's maybe a little obvious, but I think it'd be fun. Who has the highest PFF grade? On Ooh. The team? Um, let's see here. Based Aaron off Jones. of. The first thing that comes to mind is Rudy Ford. I'm not saying that's my pick. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. He, he has had great. such a high PFF grade so far. It's obvious they they are liking what they're seeing with him. You you add in two interceptions. I don't remember him making a mistake. Can I, I ask a question? So did we just watch the transformation from Rudy Ford, or I'm sorry, from Savage to Slot to Rudy Ford to Safety? Because I feel like we just saw that happen. But Yeah, I think so. I think so too, but what's crazy, what sucks is it would not have happened if Stokes was healthy, and we'd probably still yeah, be sitting here yeah, kicking yeah. and screaming. Well, and that's that's right. the problem with the team is they're too they they're so stubborn and just doing. And you mentioned this, Clayton. They they're, they won't do the obvious thing until something just catastrophic happens. We had to watch Amari fumble for the fifth time before <laughs> they're like, oh, maybe. And, and that was the same thing with kick return. Right. It was the same thing that he shouldn't have been doing that. And then he fumbled. They're like, all right, you're not doing that anymore, but you're still going to be punt return. And then he fumbles <laughs> yeah. that. Oh, okay. It's like, stop doing this. I don't this get thing. it, too, because they get Nixon. Nixon grabs the ball like this. He's like, yeah, I got it. And he just <laughs> yeah. 
starts doing this, and I'm like, how do you not see that guy's Dude, belly you, handling the ball? When he snatched it and held it out like that and kind of went over the defender, <laughs> yeah, I immediately like, thought Deion Sanders. Yep. Do you yes. remember Deion back in the day? Yep. Like, oh, my God, dude. And that's what I said to Ryan on Twitter. He's carrying that thing like a loaf of bread, man. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, from the first time Nixon returned a kickoff, just the way he does it, the speed, the decisiveness, it's like that's the guy. I mean, that's there's right. no question. Why would you put ball. Amari back out there? That's the dude for sure. Absolutely. Completely agree. And uh, oh, Jake goodness. Jake in the chat says 195-1 and one with a 14-point lead in the fourth quarter. Yes. Jake, I need one more chat message confirming that is legit, bro. Because Thomas Austin, as that always, was Thomas Cowboys. Oh, stop. And Thomas Austin fires off 3,500 tweets and gets me thinking about 17 different things, and now he's in the chat and he's inside my head. Constantly. All right. Explain, explain this one to me. The Cowboys yeah. were leading – 21 to 6 against the Washington uh, Redskins in 1984, <laughs> and they lost 30 to 28. Is that not? What are we talking about here? Uh, I'm from Kentucky, man. You can't ask me to deal with numbers. I'm just reading the chat. That's chat. just one just example. Reading... I just pulled one out because they lost a bunch of these games. <laughs> Explain yeah, that. I don't one. believe that. 20, 21 to 6. Are they winning by more than 14? Thomas Austin, this is why we can't have nice things. We had a decent show going, and now you've got us digging back through 30 years of history to try to find a. And well, why is Jake Gasly on all of a sudden? Everything she I said about there all too. these yeah, it's not, podcasts, it's not forget Austin. it, guys. Forget it. Everything she I did to really. plug Jake's podcast, forget it. Jake, you're you're on my crap list now, dude. Bring oh, in back. the fourth quarter. Oh, in the fourth? Not at okay. halftime. Okay. 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 All right. That's legit. I'm not looking that up. We'll just call that good. That's there you go. Good <laughs> enough. All right, Jake. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. All right, Goose. We just said, called out Jake and said, you suck. You suck. Don't, Don't ever mind. listen Your to this show. Is an idiot. <laughs> Every, everybody listening to my voice, call into Packernet after dark and bash Jake. Okay. Oh. That's the goal. All Jake, right, so, not Jacob. Jake, not Jacob. Goose in the chat says, I'm still okay with seeing what love has if we are eliminated, but at least we showed we want something tonight. And, and dude, I remember specifically in the fourth quarter thinking, I don't know, man, I still don't feel good about this game, but they came out and fought. And there's they a lot of stuff to, to come away with. You know, another one I want to mention, number five on my list that I tweeted out was Kingsley and Agbare. What did you guys think about him? Because he flashed to me. He had one quarterback hit multiple times, had his hands up in the quarterback's face, got good good bull rush off the edge. He ended up with five tackles. The thing that surprised me the most about Kingsley is his ability to play the run. But, Ryan, what do you think about him stepping in for Rashawn Gary and even playing both sides? I've seen where him and Preston swapped a couple times. Uh, what do you think about Kingsley and Ibarra? I uh... – well, I think he, he didn't even bat the pass once on one of those interceptions. Not that it necessarily needed it, but I think he he tipped the ball a little bit on one of those picks. But the thing that I like about him is his, his violence. You know, the, the run defense in general is part of it. But one of the plays that stood out to me is he was chasing somebody from behind and, and he hit him like a freaking truck. You know, some of these guys, even Rashawn, once in a while, they grab him and they're trying. Right. And he just he just hit him so dead on. And every time I see him hit people, he's such a big physical guy. So – you know, I'm, I'm sure he's got a little bit of refining to do, but um, for a rookie to come in, play the run, impact the game as a pass rusher, um, I, I, I'm beyond happy with where he's. I mean, he's he's ahead of where Devontae Wyatt is. I hope he's okay. I don't mean to talk bad about Wyatt, but the fact mm -hmm. that he's come in and, and impressed to this degree ahead of – I mean, he's, he's probably possibly better than Quay considering how he kind of had some bad stretches down there. So it's a lot for a rookie to come in. I mean, it's not even – that I'm less impressed with those guys more so than with him. That's I think the standard is you come in, you don't know what you're doing, you look kind of like garbage. But um, I don't think there's been a single game where I've watched Kingsley and just thought this dude sucks, man. He's he's not yeah, going to be able no. to do it. He's just solid. I agree, and I you know I, I think he'll be one of those players that has a decent PFF grade tomorrow. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised one bit. Now back to your question, Ryan. I think you actually asked who's going to have the highest PFF grade. <clears throat> For me, it would be Aaron Jones. I think Aaron Jones has is, is got it. Um, yeah. What would yours be, Jacob? Well, um, and you can say Aaron Jones too if, if that's if that would be your pick. No, I think I think it would. God, uh, just think about it a minute, Ryan. Who? What about you, man? I know he had the drops, but I'm going with Watson. Watson. I just think that 170 yards and three Watson touchdowns, too, yeah. and you know. 
I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how the grading system works. I know they're a little bit more about consistency, and he struggled there. But I just I, I think it's going to be hard to not at least get a really good grade, if not the highest. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thomas Austin in the chat says, in my Madden season, the Packers are 9-1, and one, and that has nothing to do with anything. It just felt like sharing. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to guess, I would I – would, if I had to put money out, I'd say Watson, but just because I – Every time I think PFF is going to do something, I think they do the opposite. So I would guess it would be maybe one of our offensive linemen or um, Rogers or something like that. You know, I don't know. Yeah, it felt like Bakhtiari is looking more and more like himself too. Like I'd say even I, maybe Rudy Ford, maybe highest because just the dude yeah. just seems like he's. I mean, it was it was just a fun game to watch. I'm I'm so. <laughs> I was so pleasantly surprised to watch this game and not. I mean, it, it's it. It sucked the whole game watching it, but the end fruition of it just gave me a. Oh, it was just a release of like, just okay, <laughs> it's okay for now. Like, you don't have to be super depressed because I don't know about you guys, but I'm one of those Packer fans where if we lose, don't talk to me till like Thursday. Because, <laughs> and I've realized like this last for like, I don't know, two months, I've been like, why am I so such a grumpy curmudgeon? Why am I such an a hole all the time? And it's like, oh, because the Packers lost every single week. <laughs> like it dictates my mood, and people are like, "Are you okay? Like, do you need to talk to someone?" I'm like, "No, I just need the Packers. I just need Rogers to throw like a dime, you know." And that's all I need. Just like a just like a Packers junkie. I just I just need one of those deep balls. I just need one more hit. You got bro. you got one just, of those for me. Yeah, one more one deep pass to Watson. Oh. No, nah. ooh, all right. <laughs> This is one more, bro. Off the rails. (laughs) Off the rails. Um, Goose said the growth of our rookies is awesome. So mad that Dobbs and Wyatt are hurt. Completely agree. Thomas Austin did confirm that stat was one ninety five and zero with a fourteen point lead going into the fourth quarter. So now they lost one. Um, Here we got in the chat. Michael says um, Quay cannot get off blocks. He gets lost in the wash. Draw plays were successful mostly because of that. I have personally seen that as well. Now, him, some of the positive notes I had about Quay was him attacking the flat. When they were passing the flat, man, he had the closing speed, the athleticism to get there. And I think he's a pretty decent tackler in the open field. It's just when, when you get him inside the box, he's not one of those stumpers. He's not one of those guys that's just going to, you know, like your A.J. Hawks. That was what A.J. Hawk was so good at. He would jump in there and go head-to-head with a guard and, and play Jack backer in that 34 zone blitz and just do the job. Quay's not that kind of linebacker. He's more of a sideline to sideline type of guy. But again, he's young. I'm excited to see what he grows into. But I can kind of understand what he's what he's saying there with Quay. Um, let's see here. See, Michael also says it's it's one it's one game for God's sakes. Okay, well, okay, we could have said that last week too. It's just one game, guys. On a five. Yeah. It is what it is, right? Um, cut Amari and get some bum named Odell is what Thomas <laughs> Austin. <laughs> and now we got the guesses coming in. Thomas Austin guesses that PF that Rogers Aaron Rodgers' PFF is at eighty four point three. That's a good guess. <laughs> that's a good guess. That's a trash guess. Let's put that down there. Real quick. <laughs> that's safe. He's that's just safe. <laughs> that's hilarious. That's only. I, I, mean, I think that's a good. That's a good guess. <laughs> yeah, Goose. Look at Goose coming in here. PFF Christian Watson fifty eight point seven. That's that's going to be one of those, and I, and I'm going to just come on the pod. You'll know when I go on the podcast and just go. I'm not doing PFF grades today. I'm just not feeling like <laughs> it. It's because Watson had a sixty and Rogers had a forty, and I'm just going to be like, yeah, we don't need to talk about. We don't, it. I don't even want to do this <laughs> we'll do something else. Yeah, Thomas Austin <laughs> says uh, Christian Watson sixty four point eight. Aaron Jones sixty six. What? Uh, <laughs> Amari seventy one point one special teams grade is what <laughs> is what Goose says. Oh my God. My. It, I swear to God, Goose, if that's true, I'm gonna fly to Canada and I'm gonna beat you up. Just, <laughs> it's, your fault. it's not your fault, but I'm gonna <laughs> take it out of you. I'm gonna beat you with a moose. <laughs> All right, so we're, we're, run, we're running out of time here before we Sock wrap up. Full this of moose of the <laughs> Corey Corey said, realistically, if we're gonna make a run. Who can actually rush the passer because with Gary out, you know. So, um, to, tonight, I don't know, man. I, I don't know what Dallas's offensive line looks like. I don't know how strong Tyler it is. Tyler Smith, I, much, I mean, but, it's, a, it's, it's not that great. I mean, I would expect that uh, Preston would have at least showed up. And if Kingsley is going to be that guy, then he should have at least, you know, showed up a little bit more tonight, in my opinion. You know, 
Just saying. I know the announcers were talking about Jaron Reed getting pressure on Dak on that incompletion where they he thought got a, he, he got a down. sack. Yeah, and yeah. then I think he got hurt as well. Yeah, but also Preston Smith was in on that play though. He was one that that hit Dak on that same exact play. So, yeah. Somebody somebody posted a stat I saw. That obviously, the pass rush plummets when Rashawn isn't on the field. But the other thing that the stat showed is that we blitz a lot more to compensate for that. So I think you're going to see a lot of that. I was just looking at the stats. Uh, we had two sacks, one from Kenny, and the other one was Adrian Amos. So I think there's going to wow. be it more. It makes me so mad that, like, oh, yeah, so because we don't have, like, the best guy, we're going to blitz a little bit more. Like, why don't you just keep the best pass rusher ever and then blitz just a tiny bit yeah. and see how that works. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just yeah. – I think Ryan maybe highlighted this two weeks ago or whatever. I think that we were the, the least blitzing of, what is it, five – defenders or six defenders or seven defenders or four defenders. We were basically like the least blitzing team in the whole league. We yeah. run base basically all the time. And that's all we right. do. Four men rush. Yeah. Just sub uh, Jake in the chat here says, uh, and he's quoting Rod or yeah. Quoting Watson evidently after the game, he said, quote, this is what Rogers said to Watson quote, the ball's still coming your way, buddy. Let's get one of these. Let's make a play. How does so, he know? How that does was he know that? Watson on Rogers. Uh, what Roger said to him after the drops because they had him at the presser, I'm sure, bro. This is what Watson said. He yeah, said Watson said at the press conference. So I know that's what I was, that's, and that's what I was saying as far as it could have been a disaster if they decided forget this guy. You know what I mean? That that's why you got to stick with it, and that's why we should have been. I know he's been injured, but there was still more opportunities. I think there. I mean, how many times do we go back and say, hey? There's Watson open. There's Watson open. There's Watson open. Well, that's what I'm you saying know. is that the game where he – they pulled him out because he could have had a concussion but didn't, and they knew yeah, he didn't. Like, I don't understand that. I don't understand they that. To, right. They, no, because and, of and what, what happened to Tua, right? Right. Well, plus that's he just had a concussion like the game before. Right. So, so you just had a concussion, just, and then, yeah. Even though it was a quote-unquote chess injury, you basically right. have to stop yourself from – I guess. Because that's I where we're know. at now in the league. It's like you have to literally – you have to stop and give them another game buffer just to make sure that you're not on the line legally. And honestly, I kind of, I understand that, but um, mm -hmm. as a fan, it's really hard to watch because yeah, who knows sense. if this chemistry would have happened a game earlier. And I know, right. Like we, we talked about it uh, or not we, but you on your podcast, like the, uh, what was it? The, the, the ratio or the, um, the percentage of teams that have made the playoffs going off of a three and five record is like point. Like, what yeah, is it? So point not good. <laughs> point oh one or something like that. Yeah. And the people that even won their first playoff game after that was like maybe the Giants in 2013 or something like that. So, anyways, long story short, we're almost better off tanking, but we don't tank. So, what what do you call this point right. in our season after we just beat the Cowboys going forward? Uh, and this is where I actually would love to hear you guys' perspective because what do we do here? Is this called a tank? Is this called a just play it as a lie? What is this? Go ahead, Ryan. Well, you, I mean, I, I mean, obviously you're not going to go. In, you're, you're not going to go into the locker room and be like, "That was awesome, guys." However, we're kind of screwed. <laughs> That's right. So everybody, pump need, it down, pump the brakes. Yeah, I'm going to need you guys to just relax because <laughs> we're supposed to lose this game. Rogers, what the heck, uh, Watson. <laughs> You couldn't have dropped one more, you freaking <laughs> jag off. Like, why, 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 why are you doing this to me? So, no, I mean, you don't have a choice. I, it, the, the problem is they were so bad the first part of the season that even if they're perfect or nearly perfect, it's such an uphill climb just to barely limp in. But you don't have a choice. I mean, that's that's what you're going to do. You're playing good football. You keep playing good football. That's just that's what it is. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so in the chat here, Goose says, player of the game, Jones, with honorable mention to Watson. Mike Lane in the chat says, I'm trying to kill the buzz here, says, once again, through early, <laughs> though early <laughs> offense, the special teams blunders are the reason the pack almost lost this game. Um, very true, very true. It's true. We got uh, Corey in the chats predicting that Aaron Rodgers has a 92.5 PFF Ooh. grade. Um, then Michael says, which player had the lowest PFF grade? I know who mine is. What do you I know mean? who yours is, too. Who's that? <laughs> mine, I, I would say Savage. But um, then again, I haven't. I didn't watch him too much. But uh, there was a couple times that I noticed, oh, there's a big play. Well, looky there. Number 26 is chasing after this guy. <laughs> so um, what do you guys think? What, what do you think will be the lowest since we're just going to drag everybody down here at the end of the show? <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's just great. <laughs> Jacob, what's your, what's your lowest, Jacob? 
I mean, it's 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 got to be either Savage or God, maybe one of the interior uh, interior defensive linemen. I mean, I just somewhere in there, like one of those random things you don't see coming. One of the one of the guys you see that's a uh, like a, a blaring beacon light, and then one of those guys you just don't see. I'd say like uh, yeah, Savage, and then like randomly like Lowry or something like that. You know. Yeah. Gotcha. What do you think? Yeah, Ryan? I'm, I'm I'm looking at the fact that the run defense really struggled and yeah, thinking that exactly. somebody yep. in there yes. is probably going to get highlighted. Um yep. it's probably not Kenny because he had the sack. I know Jaron Reed kind of flashed a little bit. So Jaron Reed maybe, had a sack too. Maybe like Dean Lowry or something like that. Maybe yep. even Quay, to be honest. I don't know that he I, I, I don't know that he really blew it up. And if he really was just getting blown up on all those run plays, he might it might be like a twenty four overall type of game for him. I don't know. Got it. Quay. So, Quay seemed like he was right there, but he's always right there. You know what I mean? It's like every linebacker that we always love. He's so good. He's so fast. He tackles him right after he makes the first down. It's so he's so good. <laughs> oh, that that drives like, me nuts. Yeah, for sure. Mm. All right, as we get ready to wrap up here, guys, we're gonna do something real quick. Let's just go to Twitter and let's watch these plays one more time. Y'all yes. go with that. Let's watch them. Yes, absolutely. Let's get pumped. Let's watch it like nine times. Let's go. Let's go. On the fake, Rodgers lets it fly, has Watson, he's got it on his feet and he's in for the touchdown. Look this backflip, looking like me getting a cookie in the middle mm. of the night. Oh. What the? <laughs> that might be the biggest catch of this young receiver's career. Oh yeah, On the fake, yes, Rodgers lets it fly, uh -oh. has uh -oh. Watson, uh -oh. he's got it. Uh, sorry, they can Hang find on. a way to get Jones out. He's number two. Rodgers. Steps up, going deep, has a man, it's caught, Watson is in, touchdown Green Bay! Let's go. Let's go. Seven. Love it. Hey, just, just for the record, watch Rodgers right here, guys. Rogers. Watch Rodgers. can find a way to get Jones out. Watch his. Rodgers, steps it. up, going deep, has a man, it's caught, Watson is in! I'm sorry, I just gotta, gotta do it, sorry. It's just the way I am. Um, again, so why did I mention that? Thomas Austin in the chat said, don't let this game make you forget to fire Goody and Trey Rogers. Okay? Don't let that – don't don't ever forget that, guys. All right, last last one we're getting out of here. <laughs> Michael says, I don't and think Kenny Clark hat, played very is. well. That was going to be one that, that I thought had a low grade. We've seen it, Ryan. Like Kenny Clark's PFF grade has just sunk out of sight, right? Yeah. And mainly because of run defense. I mean, you, you're playing nose or playing that three-tech when you're in a wide nine – like, that's probably who was getting gashed on the draws somewhat, so I could kind of see that. But as we get out of here, we're at the uh, one hour and eight minute mark. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us in the chat for sure. Also on Twitter, YouTube, all that good stuff. Can't thank you guys enough too, Ryan and Jacob. But let's get some parting thoughts, man. Uh, Ryan, what are you thinking here, dude? Coming away from this game, um, who do we got next? I'm trying to even think. Tennessee. Titans. Woo! Lord have mercy. Thursday night, bro. We're playing Yeah, that's right. We got week. Thursday. Short week. All right, um, and they they've won today against the Broncos, I believe. We're gonna um, win this game, boys. We're gonna win this game. Hey, you never know. What are you thinking, Ryan? Coming out of here, man. Parting thoughts. I I know that today felt really good. I didn't realize how bad I needed this until it happened. Um, it just it just was like. Don't get negative, Ryan. Well, no. I, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm gonna say this as positive as I can. the The only question I have is. Can we do this consistently, right? They've had this talent all year, right? Can you do this next week? Can you – can can Rodgers continue to play at that level? Can Watson play at that – uh, Watkins, is he going to continue to do that all year with the back shoulder throws and all that, or is he going to start running the wrong direction, right? I mean, we, we, see, we saw two weeks ago Aaron Jones had like seven yards of carry, and we said, yeah, but that's not going to happen every week. The next week he runs for like two yards per carry, and we lose the game. Yep. So – can we do this every week or are we just going to go right back into the tank is, is the only real question that I have going forward. But this was awesome. I had a lot of fun. I'm super pumped for Christian Watson. And uh, I, I look forward to enjoying a lot more of this the rest of the year. Good stuff. Jacob. Yeah, man. I uh, echo that. Um, super excited to see Christian Watson. Krista Watson. I, I apologize. Your son is a, Glittering gold god. He is the best thing that's ever happened to the Green Bay Packers. He is the what best did you thing say? ever. 
He said he's a pillar of the I community. just said that I just said that he maybe like is needs to put some weight on himself. I'm just saying. That's all I said. You were That's like the biggest Watson fan of the group. Why did you go? I am the biggest I don't get it. Watson. Now I was you're the apologizing. biggest Watson fan of all times. No, I'm just saying I shouldn't have. <laughs> anyway, long story short, I love him. Going to buy a jersey. Don't hate me. You want to go for a coffee? Let me know. All right. Take it easy. <laughs> oh, my God. We got a man shooting his shot live on the air. All right. Here we, here we go. <laughs> So, <laughs> Jacob said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Wayne um, Gritzky slash Michael Scott. Michael Scott. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <laughs> looking ahead, guys, we're getting out of here. Looking ahead, Thursday night, we got the Titans at Lambeau, Thursday night football on Amazon Prime. The high that day is 29. The low that night is 18 degrees. So Aaron Rodgers will have the turtleneck out in force. <laughs> And uh, there's 21% chance of precipitation. So we might see a little flurry there at Lambeau Thursday night. And, hey, look, here's, here's the deal. I feel like we're playing with the house's money. Everybody wrote the Packers off. I said that today. Like, there was nobody expecting them to beat the Cowboys. Let's just go out and have fun, try to thump some heads and see what happens, right? And when it comes to the point, if it does, that, okay, we're eliminated from playoff contention, let's make sure we evaluate the roster enough to get into the offseason and make the adjustments we need to make and, and gear up for a run, get healthy, and all that good stuff. So I personally think 12 is going to be back next year. That's me. Um, if he if he does retire, guess what, guys? We're going to have some extra cap room. We're going to be able to see what we got in love. Either way, you know, everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. But it was just nice to see them come out here and put the Cowboys in check. Guys, a 6-2 and two team, like, come on. I'm all beat about so. Four times now consecutively. What's that? We beat them the last four times consecutively. That's pretty Ooh, impressive. That's, so that's awesome. nice. And I, I kind of feel like we own the Titans, too, here of lately. Seems like they beat them at Lambeau in the snow a couple years yep. ago. Yes, years ago like that. yep. That's what uh, Jake was saying, A.J. Dillon game incoming. That's right. The A.J. Dillon game last time. Oh, yeah, it was. That was kind of the coming out party, wasn't it? It was. Um, <laughs> here's the thing. What is it? Yeah. Thomas is calling you out, bro. Oh, Lord. Let me go to the chat here. See, y'all going to make me go over on time. <laughs> Put some respect on my name. <laughs> <laughs> you got to say it like Birdman, too. Somebody give me the Birdman. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> I don't know if I did that right or not. But uh, anyway, we're out of here, guys. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us. We really appreciate everybody in the chat. You guys always make the post game show. That much more enjoyable. Appreciate everybody on Twitter, on YouTube. Ryan, I know you got a lot of stuff going on. Thank you for your time. Jacob, thank you for your time, buddy. I know it's been a rough day, but, hey, we came away with a dub. So I got robbed said, today. Um, for those of you listening on the pod, hope you all have a great Monday. As always, let's go out and be the change we want to see in the world. And go back, go. Turn inside the 10, leaps for the touchdown.